Hey Catalysts, went out to go see the movie Oblivion tonight, so I forgot to talk about that a little bit. If you don't want any spoilers, now's probably about the time you want to stop watching the video. So I went out with a couple friends of mine, we went to go see the movie Oblivion, new Tom Cruise movie. Uh, basically it's set like in the nearish future. Essentially the premise of the movie is that Tom Cruise is there to help be like a repair maintenance person for these drones that are supposed to be making sure that all the things that are sucking up the water are uh, able to keep functioning okay because they keep on getting attacked by these alien creatures, uh, which is automatically suspect right there. Uh, in addition to the fact that they start out with the fact that they have a five-year you know, memory wipe that they have to do so that they wipe out their memories and things like that. Uh, you know, it's all the, the, the typical setup. You basically, the cloak and dagger stuff of trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And it's fairly typical in terms of what you would expect it to be. Uh, you know, it turns out, oh, what do you know? The, the bad guys aren't really the bad guys and they've been sold a bad bill of goods. And, oh, you've been working for the bad guy all along. Big surprise. One thing that we noticed was that the bad guy is pretty much like a, a giant version of GLaDOS who has essentially won. There seem to be a lot of portal references actually in terms of like you have this big bad robot who's controlling all like these little drones and, and things like that. And you have the drones who make cute little noises and they are kind of cute but then at the same time they are very deadly and have guns on them and end up shooting people and killing people. And at one point in time the hero Julia ends up looking down over the Empire State Building and the way that she is set up she actually has a, a set of coveralls on and her coveralls, she's got them down halfway uh, and she's wearing like a wife beater underneath that. And at that point, I'm just sitting there looking at that going, God, she looks like Shell. Intentional? Maybe? I don't know. It feels like there's a lot of influence there. There are a few other things that are little twists and turns, but I can't say that they're fairly unexpected. I can't say that they're fairly surprising. If you've seen enough movies, you probably figure it out pretty easily. Uh, but what it boils down to is, is I mean, it's a pretty good movie all in all. It's got a little bit of action. It's got a little bit of mystery. It's got a little bit of sci-fi and everything like that. Uh, and the whole nostalgia angle. Um, and it does have a few twists and turns that, um, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll leave out. But essentially what it boils down to is, is you know, it's the, the, the typical movie and you can imagine how the ending is already going to go. Um, so all in all, give it about three and a half out of five stars. Uh, if you asked me if I would go see it again, I'd say uh, I probably wouldn't see it again. It's probably not that good. Um, if I knew, you know, more about the movie at the at this point, would I go see it? You know, would I pay nine fifty again? Eh, yeah, uh, probably. Eh, probably maybe a matinee. Good, good story all in all. Re relatively, uh, re relatively unique and and in the take that it has on it, but. Uh, you know, fairly a foregone conclusion in terms of how the movie is going to end up. Um, again, if you've seen movies like this, you can figure it out. So that's my quick review of Oblivion. Like I said, three and a half out of five stars. Probably not bad to go catch it if you like sci-fi, if you like near future dystopian type stuff. Give it a go. Anyway, thanks for watching.